Hello, <laughs> and uh, welcome to Friday Live. This is our weekly opportunity to connect up with you, our friends, our family, our community. We uh, hope and uh, pray that you are all feeling safe and healthy. It's also, as, as we promise, an opportunity to update you on all things The Noise Within. And uh, I have a couple of updates uh, from our education department. As you know, our Summer with Shakespeare program is going virtual this year. It starts, uh, let me see, I believe it starts June 15th and we still have a number of spots available. So go to our website at www.anoisewithin.org. Also, we have the Educator Extravaganza coming up and it's a terrific event uh, for teachers and that is June 12th from 10 to two. And it's a wonderful opportunity for educators to get practical tools to enrich uh, their classroom curriculum. And just as a reminder, our Rise Together fundraising campaign is going full swing at this moment. Um, if you have donated to the campaign, we are so very grateful. If you haven't, uh, we would ask that you consider it if you are able to. This is a fundraising campaign to help the company come back as strong as ever once we get through these weird, wacky, strange times. Uh, and on that note, we want to make sure that you all know that we've got very much our eye on the uh, Pasadena Department of Health's uh, guidelines in terms of how and when to safely open the theater, along with, in conjunction with the Actors Union, Actors Equity Association. We have a very close eye on both of those organizations as continued guidance and evolving guidance comes out about how and when to open. And now to our resident artists and our a wonderful conversation that we will be having with our resident artists. Our resident artists are a core group of 21 artists. We have 16 actors, three designers, one composer and a stage manager. And these are individuals that the organization invests in a long-term relationship uh, with them. They, are, they have a bond amongst each other and they have a bond with you, our community. So I'd like to introduce uh, five of our resident artists. So um, welcome RAs. Uh, there they are. There they are. The gallery of stars. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Oh my God! The beams of light shining at me. There are no <laughs> ah. mm -hmm. <laughs> So I'm going to ask each of you to introduce yourselves and perhaps tell us how long you've been a resident artist and if you can remember how many productions you've been in. That that would be fun. <gasps> Hi there, I'm Deborah Strang. I've been around since I was a wee little lass, uh, about 29 years now. And I, I counted the productions about three years ago and it was at around 75 at that time. Wow. Uh, hi, I'm Alan Blumenfeld. Um, my first production with Noise Within was 1999. I've been a resident artist for nine years and I've done 17 productions. Erica. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, I'm Erica Soto. Um, I, uh, along with Casey Mahaffey, feel like the toddlers of the RAs because <laughs> we are three years old. I think, right, Casey? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Three. And, we just celebrated um, our anniversary. And I believe at this point it's about six or seven productions. Yeah, it's been great. Uh, so, hi, everyone. My name is Casey Mahaffey. Uh, my, my, uh, uh, my first show was The Tempest. Uh, that was in 2014. Um, I have done, I believe, 15 shows at A Noise Within, counting remounts. I count the remounts, guys. I count them. They're there. Mm, that's valid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um, hello, I'm Raphael Goldstein, and uh, I've been an RA since 2012. 
Um, but my relationship with the theater goes back to 2005, I believe. Um, and I think I've done, what, 25, 30 show? Is that Does that sound right, Deb? Well, I'm probably a little higher than that. Maybe, yeah, um, it's, between, yeah. it's somewhere in there, somewhere in there, yeah. anyway, yeah. Thank, thank you for that. And, and we thank everyone who sent in questions and we will try to get to all of those. And if you have a question during the broadcast, please feel free to use your chat feature and we will try to get to as many questions as, as we can. I, I think one that everyone uh, always um, likes to hear about is what is a favorite production or role uh, and why? Um, and, and perhaps we can start with Deborah on that. <sighs> this is always the hardest question to answer because you feel like a mother who is choosing your favorite child. Uh, so, so my default is always just to say it's whatever show I'm working on, but I'm not working on anything right now. So I can, uh, I can tell, tell tales. Um, and, and, and I have to mention that, uh, that one of my favorites was Our Town. And, and that's primarily because uh, I was the stage manager in that production. That was the first time that Jeff and Julia and I collaborated on a play. And uh, I think that established our vocabulary with one another, our senses of humor, and, uh, and the way in which we worked together back in those very, very early years. Uh, I, I also have to mention um, uh, Come Back Little Sheba by William Eng. <laughs> oh, I love that picture. Uh, because that I love William Eng, first of all. I think he's my soulmate. And, uh, and, and I think he, he knows me deeply. So I, I feel like he wrote that part for me. And, and getting to work with, with Jeff, uh, who, who I love so much, and with Julia directing was, was truly a dream. And then I want to mention one more, because sometimes the favorite play is not what you expect. Uh, when the season they announced Ubu, as, as one of the productions, I read it, oh God, and I, I told them right up front, I put me in anything, but don't put me in Ubu, because I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand the play. I didn't know what it meant. And of course they cast me in Ubu. So uh, when they told me we were gonna start the play sitting on a toilet, <laughs> I just rolled my eyes. But once you start a play sitting on a toilet, it means, anything can happen and and you you can be fearless the rest of the show so it was and alan blumenfeld and i got to work together as ma and pa in that so uh it it was truly a surprise and and is one of my all-time favorite plays and parts uh, I remember a patron uh, who wrote after seeing Ubu and said they started on the toilet and it was downhill from there. On. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Oh my God. Clearly, 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 clearly didn't appreciate the humor. I remember, I remember asking Deborah to start out on the toilet uh, with her pants down and I thought she was going to quit. <laughs> <laughs> look in her eye was you know, really deadly. Has it come to this? Is this <laughs> what it is now? Yeah. And then yeah. a week a week or so later, they said for me to take some toilet paper and wipe my butt. And so it was, you know, <laughs> oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Alan Alan Blumenfeld. Yes, what indeed. Uh, well, I'll start with Ubu, which was um, you know, I it was not my first production at Noise Within, but it was it's still to this day one of my favorite theatrical experiences ever. And I'll say a couple of things briefly about it, which is th th there are several versions of this script that exist. And one of the things that made this experience so amazing was that we really built this show together out of, not out of nothing, but out of all the pieces. Julia was so brilliant. And I think it began her... Uh, discovering a visual vocabulary, the top hats, the, um, the umbrellas, the suitcase, all those colors, all, all of the visual vocabulary of how to tell a story. But 
there were so many ways that we built this out of out of collaboration. And I remember at one point Julie said, oh, there's gonna be puppets, there are gonna be shadow puppets. Oh no, we don't need that. We're gonna do, there's gonna be, uh, there were original songs that we were creating in the middle, all out of found objects, out of piano. I mean, it was really a truly collaborative experience out of just our own collective. I mean, there were times where we had no idea what we were doing. Uh, you know, when the show was first done, the first word in the show is merdre in French, which translated often as shitterer. But it, it uh, when they when they spoke that word, there was a riot in the theater when it when it premiered, and they had to stop the production. It took twenty minutes. They brought everyone back. They started again. Merdre, and there was another riot, and they had to bring people back. And so I think you know when Jeff. I think came up with the idea of the toilet, which was, so what do you do now that's shocking <laughs> to, a, to an audience? Because uh, you can't curse, that's de rigueur to you know, continue the French. And not only did we start on the toilet, and then he said, you should wipe yourself, and I would wipe myself, and then I would take the toilet paper and put it in my shirt pocket. <laughs> and that to me was the cap of how what this production was going to be which was just in your face and not just outrageous and provocative for the sake of it but so theatrical so so beyond it was just such a great joyous experience and deborah was magnificent oh. to work with and as i recall alan we were also eating cereal right that is correct eating and on the toilet which you know yeah, yeah. Be able to eat and defecate at the same time without moving. This is a kind of genius, right? That's new. That's right. New. I, it would be, I, in fact, while I'm sitting, I don't want to put too many images in your head, but yes, it, it was a kind of, kind of brilliant. It was, it was so much fun. It was so collaborative. It was so inventive. Um, and then I guess the other production I mentioned is, is Argo, uh, Argo Nautica. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think there's a direct link, in my opinion, uh, in terms of Julia's uh, inventiveness and progression as a director, uh, the, 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 how inventive and how uh, theatrical and yet real that she can combine the reality of the scenes on a personal level with a highly spectacular theatrical event. And from Ubu, which is, of course, the beginning of, of absurdism, all the way to Argo, there is this progression in, in, in her work that I found such a joy to be part of. And again, it was a very collaborative experience, although as the extremely old man among the cast of these young men doing push-ups in between scenes, they would have contests. Who could do as many push-ups as I mean, it was, and I would sit quietly on the side and say, this is lovely. I'm really glad that you can do this. But it was, uh, <laughs> it was again, a, a, a play that, that the script had suggestions and that we built together uh, as an experience. And it was, it, that is what the theater is above all, is that highly inventive collaboration. That's lovely. Erica. Oh my gosh. Well, I feel so bad that I couldn't laugh with you guys because I didn't hear a single thing Alan said. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was, I, I feel like I missed out on some of the party. So I hope I'll tell you later. This. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, um, oh my gosh. Well, um, I couldn't, I, I mean, I, I, I could not say my first production, uh, with the company. You never can tell. Um, because, and there's Casey, uh, because <laughs> it was my first show and, um, and uh, and and I got to start it with someone who would, you know, soon soon be such a great friend uh, and confidant and 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 bud in this in this whole experience, Mr. Mahaffey. Um, but uh, what I love about that show so much is that uh, it felt like the most perfect timing kind of show, um, and and I miss it so much now because that role allowed me to kind of express aspects of my personality that I like don't socially have permission to express most <laughs> of the time, which is like, <laughs> which is like, 
you know, just un unrestricted mischief <sighs> and flirtation and gooberness and joy and like you know I, it's like i'm 31 but i'm really just still 12 and 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 so it was just such a great opportunity to kind of, to kind of exist and to feel like a firecracker or like one of those like fourth of july ones that light and only lasts for a little bit and they're like kind of like that um so i don't know it's it's i just had so much fun embodying that and also having something like that be the first thing I do on a stage and the kind of the first thing that that um, that the people in this new house get to get to experience with me and I get to experience with them was really great. And, you know, I didn't really know it at the time because I was so overwhelmed at being in this awesome new place. But, you know, I got to be in that show with Deborah Strang and Apollo and Jeremy. And, you know, little did I know that like these these great, great actors um, um, would just come to mean so much and I would learn so much from them. So um, and also, you know, having Richie there as my twin uh, was really fun. So it really felt like, um, like it wasn't just me too. So it was just kind of this, this kind of very, really cool first experience. And it felt like a burst. Uh, whereas in, in the past, you know, when you work somewhere for the first time, sometimes it's, it's playing a smaller role or, you know, you kind of sort of work your way slowly to something that dynamic. And so I feel really lucky about that. You were excellent. Um, and you then, excellent. you know, in, yeah. And then in, I don't know if stark contrast, but it feels like it when I look back. In contrast to that was um, playing Vivi Warren in Mrs. Warren's Profession. Um, and that role uh, was so cool because kind of like how uh, the twins was allowing me to be my most childlike self, Vivi allowed me to connect to, you know, the parts of me that are the the, the most mature. And, um, and it was the first time that I sort of got to um, explore something that I personally felt went beyond sort of the youthful and childlike roles that I love to play and get to play all the time. And even to like, the, you know, the trope of the ingenue that I that up until then my resume was full of, um, not to say that those roles aren't you know, full and, and well-rounded or anything like that, but something about Vivi Warren, I just got to sort of explore a more, a, a deeper and more mature and, and even in a lot of ways, a more kind of like shadow aspect of what it means to be a young woman. And that felt really empowering um, and, and really cool. And it was the first time that I felt like, I don't know, just like permission to be fully a woman somehow on stage. Um, and I'm sort of embarrassed to say that right now. I don't know why, but, but it was that. And, and, and that meant a lot to me at that time in my life too, um, a couple of years ago. Uh, and so, uh, and, and also the, uh, the other thing about that experience is that, you know, so much of the process of putting that play together asked, asked a lot of me for the first time, you know, um, and so I feel like I got to exercise um, kind of in contrast with, with, with the twins being so childlike, kind of my, my grown up muscles. And that was a big deal for me, uh, you know, at that time. And it still is as, as sort of I, I strive to, to, um, Thank you. to kind of continue Lovely. to evolve. Yeah. Lovely. Casey. No, Raphael. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Hmm? Me? Who? Raphael's name. Yeah, Raphael. Raphael. Oh. Raphael, you go. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I mean, it's hard, it's hard to choose, but uh, just off the top of my head, uh, I, it's always like, like Deb said, you know, like it, it's whenever I am asked, you know, what's your favorite thing? Um, it's always the one that I'm doing at the time. Um, but I, I have a very uh, dear fondness for Tom. Um, in Glass Menagerie, it was a, it was a, a dream come true, um, and you know I I got to share the stage with you know Deb and Casey and Erica, and I had some of the best scenes I've ever uh, got I've ever had with those three, um, and I mean it's a real testament to Williams that he 
gives you uh, everything you need for that character. Um, you can be, you know, anybody um, could, you know, apply those words. Everybody knows what it's like to be um, to be an outsider or to uh, have a uh, uh, this, you know, uh, the, these these feelings of not quite uh, not quite knowing no like knowing that there's something out there that will make you complete mm -hmm. and never never being able to articulate it or grab it and so that was uh i tapped into that a lot and i think it's a testament to to his genius um and it was just fun to do i love talking to the audience it's one of my favorite things in in the world it's it's you know and and tom has such a specific relationship um with the audience uh and also i just like looking at the audience in the face and knowing that they can't hide that's part of the you know the one the wonderful thing about live theater is that there, it is a it is a give and take it is a communion um and uh that's uh sort of essential for that uh yeah uh and so yeah i, I felt very close to him and uh to the rest of the cast and uh, it was just really fun doing that and um, but then part of the joy of being in a repertory company just generally is that you can jump from you know something that is has a sort of a natural naturalistic ish uh, tone and quality to it uh like something like glass menagerie and then you can jump to something like six characters in search of an author uh and, <laughs> which is uh god that's such a cool photo um uh Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and and uh, th I think the the version that we used was the ART version, and they give permission to make it to make the production very localized. So like Rob Dean and Susan Angelo, you know, they 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 were using their names. They were Rob and Susan, and and uh, and the audiences every time, every time they looked, uh, they they were baffled and. Uh, enraged and uh, and and touched and and there was something about that show that uh, put it seemed to put everybody on their back foot so that they couldn't help but take in uh, take in something they were feeling something Jeff and I I don't know if you remember Jeff after every show we would disappear you know the, the like there was this there was that um, uh, the the sheet would come down and our shadows would be up and then we'd disappear right and then. We, and then the show was over. The actors would walk out. Uh, you know, Susan and Rob, they'd walk out, and they, you know, were improving on the way out. And we would stand there behind the, you know, backstage and peek through the curtains. And the the lights, the house lights would come up, and the audience would just be sitting there, like, is it is it over? You know, like they 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 just, they, they did not know how to respond. And uh, sometimes there was laughter. Sometimes there was there was just complete silence. Uh, and I I just loved that. <laughs> it was it was awesome. It was so wonderfully weird so and oh man, yeah, that was great. Um, and uh, I don't know. And and then and I would be remiss to not mention uh, Henry V. Uh, that 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 was very close to me. That that was they were really close to the bone. And uh, uh, it was like it was like climbing to the top of a mountain sometimes literally um and and then getting to the top and being able to survey this this vastness it, it really did feel monumental and frederica's set certainly helped with that mm -hmm. um those two big you know uh platforms um i mean it did it, i mean talk about a play that has you know everything in it it has it contains a a, a world a universe um, and, uh, I don't know, getting to inhabit that was, uh, a rare, rare pleasure. Great. Great. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, um, none of my roles that started off on a toilet yet, <laughs> but, um, my time here is, sh it's short. It's, we're, we're young, so we have time. Um, I have had just the most incredible pleasure to do some of the uh, bucket list kind of roles um, of my life at this company. And uh, a real example, sort of a prime example of that would be 
Jerry and noises off. Um, uh, I had been wanting to play that role for 23 years. I saw, uh, a, uh, I think it was a community college production of it when I was uh, like in high school, a freshman or a sophomore in high school. And I saw them throwing sardines at each other and this guy was falling down the stairs and cracking jokes and like getting these huge laughs. And I, 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 I knew I wanted to do theater I, and, and, I, and I wanted to do that, that play and that part. Um, and it, it evaded me for so long. Every audition, I didn't get to do it. I just it, it never got to do it. And finally, when Jeff offered it to me and told me, asked me if I wanted to play Gary, I think I cried, to be honest. I was so uh, thrilled to be able to, to do it. And of course, to work with these people, these idiots running around on that <laughs> stage, we had the time of our lives. It's, it's kind of sick. It's a sickness, that, that play. <laughs> the laughs come at a mile a minute, and we all, we all just have... I mean, the time of our lives. It shouldn't be allowed. Um, and uh, the, the, there's two more, and they kind of served as a duo. They, they were at the same time, but at first it was uh, Sancho and Man of La Mancha. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, this was uh, just, oh, I mean, how do you put this play into words? This is one of the most profound theatrical experiences I've had, and I got to do it twice. I mean, who gets to say that? Uh, being alongside Jeff, working with Jeff, um, and uh, being able to sing those songs that are so evocative and beautiful. And, uh, you know, the audience uh, really gave us so much in that. We could feel, uh, right away it starts off in this prison, and we could feel in the prison their energy. The lights were kind of high and up. And, you know, just to, I, uh, to, to hop on Alan's bandwagon, Julia, I mean, she directed that. And I just, I can't think of a better example of direction than that. I mean, that was ingenious to put that, to contemporize it, to put it in a new sort of third world country. Um, and the jumpsuits that we all had in prison, I just think it was a really bold, beautiful thing to be a part of. And it happened alongside uh, King Lear, at the same time in which I got to play the fool. And uh, I think uh, for many reasons, uh, this might be uh, my favorite role that I've gotten to play. And uh, the, I know that sounds, maybe you wouldn't have thought that from some of the other ones that I've gotten to do, but this, this was the biggest challenge. Um, I have never felt so challenged. Uh, I showed up, <laughs> I showed up everyone's laughing because they, they were worried too. Um, I, I showed up and I, and I had no idea what the hell was on the page. I had no idea. And this guy, I mean, me, these jokes are 400 year old jokes, right? And like, and they all rhyme and they're all riddles and within riddles. And I had no idea what was happening. I had no idea, you know, how to, how to sell it. And uh, I was, I was struggling about two weeks in, I was in the weeds and Julia just came in and gave me just a few kernels of, you know, what if he's a cabaret singer at night? What if at midnight in the cow in the palace he has a little show and people come and and there's maybe some gender bending and some you know and and we got to put on eyeliner and lipstick and 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 within two days uh, this this cage just opened and we were set free. It was so fun to play with. It was so uh, such a beautiful mm. experience once again to work alongside Jeff as well. It was just uh, an amazing experience. Beautiful. You know, that when you talk about, you know, that relationship that you had with Jeff and sort of these partnerships and common vocabulary that you develop when you work with a company for a long time, I mean, there's certainly some of you, I'm thinking now of Deb and Jeff, that have done so many shows together. And what is that like? And um, Deb, will you just talk a little bit about that? I, I mean, the, the, the three of us have worked together so much that sometimes I call Deborah. Uh, Jeffra will be Jeffra can you move here. And so um, what what is that like and what are what are the benefits and challenges? Well, I think the greatest benefit has to do with the trust that gets established. So that uh, I mean you're always so vulnerable when you're trying to create. Um, and when you have when you're working with somebody who you trust or who trusts you that you will find it together you, you have a you're a little more fearless you're able to take bigger risks to try things uh, together mm -hmm. and and to and you know that 
that you laugh together when you succeed or fail that that the friendship will remain so with with jeff particularly since the very very early years we we worked on so many different plays as as sister brother husband wife mother son enemies partners uh, uh it uh, here we are in in buried child I, I mean i don't i don't think i could have played that character we have all the background already there. We already have such a deep, rich personal history with one another on and off the stage that the history is kind of built into whatever relationship we uh, go on to develop. Uh, you know, I even think of something like O Pioneers that we worked on together, which was this wonderful had all these wonderful dream sequences together. And I remember Jeff picking me up and carrying me. And it was the most uh, romantic uh, <laughs> kind of, you know, that I could just totally give myself into because uh, I, I trust him and he trusts me. It, and it's also in terms of, of what can happen in terms of a moment. We don't have to be afraid to try something in the moment. I would never, ever, for example, haul off and slap an actor without permission. Uh, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that permission is, 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 is built in. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't try this at home out there. Don't anybody else do that? But, but with Jeff, it's a built-in permission to to do whatever we're exploring in the moment. You know, and and I I think that happened from the first time we worked together. What was the first show we did together on stage? You remember? Well, we were both in. Well, Coriolanus was the first. Coriolanus, but, but I'm not sure it had that same kind of thing. Our town, you were the. Didn't you do the the? Now, maybe you just stepped into so, it briefly. Um, what, well, whatever, whatever it was. Gone, gone, gone. Mm -hmm. Gone, gone, gone. But whatever it was, I remember um, that I I had not really experienced an actor who listened as much as you did, who oh. was there second to second, uh, extraordinarily present. I hadn't really experienced that before. So I knew at that moment, uh, boy, I've got a real winner here. We can't let her go. You know, Jeff, the first thing that I, I remember so clearly would be when we did Glass Menagerie together. Right. And, right. and you were talking, yeah. 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 It's... Uh you know, I've been in the room with the, these two a lot. I feel like we've been in an artistic marriage for a long time. And and one of my uh, one of my uh, incredible memories was Deborah. You were talking about Sheba, and there's one scene in Little Sheba where um, Jeff's character is a recovering alcohol, but he's gone on some on a drinking uh, frenzy, and he comes home, and they get into this huge fight in the kitchen where things start flying and he grabs an ax and he's about to kill her. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yes, that's right. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> so good. And it's the kind of thing yeah. that in a traditional rehearsal, it would be very orchestrated and you would bring in a fight captain and the fight captain yeah. would walk through everything that needs to happen and the safety elements and the sense of trust and the intimacy of that moment and all of that. But, you know, these two, I remember being in a rehearsal and we get to that scene and they go for it. And I'm sitting in the rehearsal and going, oh, my God. I mean, things are flying. They're, st they're throwing, uh, you know, plates and chairs and all of it incredibly safe but and incredibly insane and incredibly in the moment and incredibly powerful and i think you were able to do that because of again that trust that you guys have with each other so it's it's really a, a beautiful thing to watch um i've also um there's also the 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 the, the casey and and raf relationship which has been a, a more recent partnership um and um Casey, might you talk a little bit about that and, and your work and um, 
Guildenstern. And how you've been stand working with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a chore, and you keep making me do it. I'm so yeah. sorry. Um, We're looking for the discovery, the secret. Uh, the secret. Um, the crazy thing about uh, about this is, I think Raph, you can you can back me up. I, I don't. I think that we had been in like six productions, like half a dozen productions together, and we hadn't ever shared the stage. Correct. Like literally, we we just would either be in different sections of the play, or like in Henry V, I was his sort of nemesis, but we would just walk by, and I think he threw a ball at me, and like that was it. And yeah. and and uh, I, I, we we always wanted to um, be able to just share a moment together. And finally, after like six shows or whatever it was, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, and then boy, he got a lot of me in that one. Um, <laughs> it was a joy. And, uh, that was, one of the best theatrical experiences I've ever had. And uh, I also have to say it was it was a duo for sure, but it was kind of a trio because Jeff, I mean, was there by our side every mm -hmm. every day and us three full. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I, I yeah, no, I, I think uh, that, you know, we we managed over the course of the that production to like become one mind. Uh, you know, with with Jeff at the at, as the glue, keeping it all, all together. Um, I don't know if you remember Casey. I think we probably do. Um, that that time when we were playing the question game, uh, it was, we were it was in. I think it was during a show, and I went up. Uh, I, I like said your line. I took your I took your line, and you clocked it just in a split second. And then you said my line, and then we did the whole question game reversed. Um, <gasps> yeah, like, the care like yeah. And uh, and I, oh. if I had been on stage with anybody else, I would have been terrified. I would have just stopped and just walked off stage and into the parking lot. Um, but but this, but because you had my, I knew you had my back, and um, and and that's I don't know. That's one of the, that's another another one of the benefits of you know these these oh. repertory companies. You know these these uh, you know we 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 instinctively in a second know. The, what the, where the other person is in any given moment. Uh, I still, I, I, I still may or may not have gone to the bathroom in my pants. In that moment. <laughs> uh, only you because may, I've oh. never done the scene backwards, an entire scene backwards. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, uh, but yes, I mean, absolutely to have him there. We just sort of had this sort of two stricken deer mm -hmm. field, <laughs> you know, we just got through it, but yeah. Um, yeah. But the but to put a uh to an uh, uh uh coda on this like now we were just in Alice in Wonderland right which mm -hmm. um I don't know uh, if any of you guys out there if you have gotten to see uh, we only had a couple performances unfortunately for from from the the COVID experience of course we had to shut down but I think that this show is uh, a priority for a noise within and, and once it is safe I think uh, we will be able to share it with you again because it is Erica is just just magnificent and luminous in, in the role of Alice but uh, Raph and I got cast as Tweedledum and Tweedledee and uh, the rehearsals for that were so scary because we do now share a mind so we don't even complete sentences it's like you yeah I don't okay fine like we just like know how to how to do it right kind of yeah like, no with, uh, without a doubt yeah. yeah and we came up that's, with this choreographed number within like a day like it's yeah. that that's exactly the thing i mean that's why that's why from the very beginning we were committed to having a company because we knew eventually the, you, you, a group of people would emerge who are able to take these shortcuts and are able to get to the real work as quickly as possible and aren't obsessing on what other people think about them, mm -hmm. and spending three or four weeks feeling judged, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the most powerful, extraordinary things about a company, and for my money, this company. It's just mm -hmm. one, one of the running questions from people that have written in and, um, and they wanna know, well, what does it mean to be an RA and what is so special about it? I mean, that's a, that's a question. Uh, that it keeps coming up and uh, we're going to try to get to a lot of these questions so we might not have an opportunity to get have every single person answer it but um, but Alan would you take that? Alan. Uh. Yeah. Thank you Th thank you thank you um, 
Yeah, that's the first time you've ever Alan, been Alan, 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 it was kind of nice to it was kind of nice to see your lips move with no sound. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right, exactly. <laughs> kind of, it was something refreshing. It was refreshing. <laughs> go, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. You know, it, it is um, it is extraordinary. I, when, when I was a young actor, I, I came up doing regional repertory theater at companies like ACT in San Francisco, where I know Jeff and Julia worked, and also at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, where you have a company. And being an RA is the closest thing to that that I've ever experienced, which is that you're part of a family. It, it's overused, I know. Everyone says that. But, you know, the word for me as an actor is ensemble. And... Uh, Whenever I hear a director say that, I sort of melt a little bit because you want to be part of something that you don't feel that you're about to be kicked out or cast aside. You want to feel taken care of, accepted. And the other thing about Noise Within, embodied in this experience, is the relationship with the community, with the audience, with the uh, patrons, in, in that part of our job as RAs is to be representatives and ambassadors with the audience, with the community. And we have a lot of opportunity for exchange and talking to the audience and, and being part of uh, talkbacks and uh, social events where we feel like we can represent the work and our friendship and our love of doing theater and being creative with a group of people who appreciate and love it as well. And, and it's just... Given what a uh, ephemeral thing this is that we do, where you go from job to job and, and you never know what's going to come next anyway, to be part of uh, a resident company is just immeasurably excellent. Uh, uh, another question that, that we have coming in, and Sam, uh, any, any questions that uh, that we should be looking at? But uh, here's here's one: If you weren't an actor, what would you be, Raph? <laughs> oh my God! God. Go uh, on. Go uh, on. Uh, Raph, uh, I'll answer it. Raph would be a serial killer. What <laughs> 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 hey, hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, uh, God, I've never been anything else. Um, I mean, I've been, I've been a homeless. Multiple. Yeah, totally. Yeah, on a, on a raft, on a raft in the Pacific Ocean. That's where I'd be. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I, I you know, I, I come from a, a long line of academics and mailmen. Um, so probably one of those. <laughs> um, you know, uh, an itinerant yeah. scholar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A traveling bard, you know. I don't know. Um, no, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I've, you know, I, I, I've never actually thought about it because this is this is the only thing I really, I really know how to do. Um, you know, it's like I, I'm, yeah. uh, I, I was born for this. <laughs> you know, this is what I, this is what I am. Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, Sam. I, Deborah, I think, had a was pursuing a career in waste management, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was going to be a garbage woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was going to be a garbage woman. Awesome. Like, <laughs> like, 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 truck? Were you, yeah. were you a science major? It was like recycling and waste management. Uh, no. no, I had to. I have always planned to, well, when I was a young kid, I wanted to, you know, I grew up with John Kennedy, so I wanted to join the Peace Corps and save the world. So I probably would have been in the social sciences if I hadn't pursued uh, acting. But when when uh, when I got out here to California and I got a little uh, tired of doing the same thing on TV every single time I was cast, I started in a program, uh, I was looking, I wanted to be a biology major and get a PhD in biology and go do work with, you know, orangutans or something. But, uh, but I got into this program with recycling and waste management through a friend of mine. And if I'd gotten a job, I probably would have done it. And this, and the irony is she's now working with orangutans. Oh, I was just going to say <laughs> I'm right here. I'm right here. Oh, I thought you were going to say it's common trash. Common timing, common timing sucks because with this stuff, we we can't come in with really good singers. I know it's really, oh, it's really unfortunate. Yeah. The lag, lag, lag. Uh, 
Uh, here's another question. Uh, oh. I'd love to hear from Deborah and Alan about the differences in performing at the old space in Glendale versus the current space. Uh, and, and you worked in the old space too, didn't you, uh, Rafa? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Since you were like 14 yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 You, you know, it's, it's hey, interesting. Yeah, it, took us, it took us a while, I think, to find our, our place in the new space. And if you had asked me this question about five years ago, I would have said, oh, I much preferred working in the old space. It was, uh, I mean, it was a very... Um, it was a very lovely old building with a lot of uh, character to it. And we were all so close to the audience, even closer than we are now. But there's something about the new theater that feels very Greek to me. It feels, um, it from the very first time we stepped in there, it felt like you were in some sort of a Greek amphitheater. And that felt great, but it took us a while. I think Pericles might have been the first production that felt like we had found our home. Uh, and a lot of that, once again, was Julia's direction there where we found how to use the space. Uh, but yeah, I agree. There, the, old, the, old space are, so intimate. the old space was so intimate. Mm -hmm. You were so close. You didn't have to, you didn't have to, uh, project anything, but th remarkably, this stage when you're on stage and looking at the audience, it also feels intimate. I know from the audience it may feel larger, but from the stage it feels very close. Um, and there's something nice about the breadth of this new space that does feel like an amphitheater. Yeah, it. Uh, I, we always say this, but I believe it to be the truth that it accommodates the epic and the intimate in a very in a very beautiful way. And with our old space, we were missing the kind of canvas that these that these plays uh, can live in. But you know, I feel like we've got both worlds uh, in the in our, the current space we're in. I, I, you know, I have to that say it. It took me and some people around me. I remember talking to Raphael about it. Uh, Anthony and Cleopatra was about a year and a half, two years in. That was the first time I began to feel relaxed and comfortable. And mm -hmm. his shoulders were finally not up around my ears. And I felt that with a lot of people around us, a lot of the other company members. It takes a long time. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Another question that's coming in. What Can you think of, of a, one, a worst moment on stage and a best moment? Yes. Pick somebody. Yeah. So, uh, Casey. Well, the best is I. Raphael already hit that one with the, uh, the question game reversal trick. That that was uh, that was insane. That was insane. Um, worst yeah. moment. I don't know if there. I you. I'm so bad at this. Pick someone else for worst because I, I don't have one. I. I have someone. One. Erica, do you have worst? Erica, can you I, hear us? She's Erica, having trouble with she's her. She's having trouble. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, uh, you know, the, even when the worst moments happen, they there's something so exciting when something goes wrong. You feel like, uh, you know, all your you just you're so present. Yeah, you light up. Yeah. You, you light up when something goes wrong, and all of a sudden, yeah. you like you feel you feel the lightning through you. You know, it <laughs> it's, it, it it really is. It, it it makes everything so tangible. It, you can you can taste the air. You know, um, and and it was uh, so. Yeah, I don't know if there's a like a worst moment that you could ever have. I mean, unless you fall and smash your teeth out. You know, but, you know. Well, and, and, Apollo, and, and, that reminds and, me of Apollo. Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say, and you get to have a huge laugh about it afterward. Absolutely. It's such yeah. a cathartic oh thing when something awful happens or someone goes up really yeah. badly. Everybody gets to have a huge laugh about it. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Another question? What about, um, we were talking about these relationships and since we have the, the, the Fab Four and Glass Menagerie, mm -hmm. um, you maybe talk a little bit about what it was like because here's it, this show with four resident artists uh, working on this very intimate piece of theater. Mm. And then, oh, man. Man. and I have yeah. to say that this was uh, this was really I don't and maybe they can't hear me. Uh, 
Yeah. I, know, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was dream that, team. That, it, yeah. it was it was my dream cast with these four folks. I mean, it was just. I mean, I I could have uh, if I had if I had had the ability to cast anybody on the planet for these roles, it wouldn't have been anybody other than these four. And not many of us can say that very often. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And you really set the tone for us too, yeah. Jeff. Uh, we all felt really safe in that room. We had so much fun. We laughed so much. Yeah. Uh, it it was it was really. Yeah, and 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 also, you know, just the 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 fact that the fact that we did we came in already as a unit. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we 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 felt this um, freedom to. To make mistakes and to take uh, crazy risks and uh, and fall on our face metaphorically and sometimes literally um, and uh, I don't know it was it, it uh, yeah it felt it felt very safe and dangerous at the same time but that, and that is, that again is a thing about a company yeah we, Julie and I at this point know your work so well. Mm. We we know how much potential you have and how many things you have gotten to do, but also the things you haven't yet gotten to do mm. continue yeah. to get to stretch you. So it's just this extraordinary thing to have a company like this. So many good things come out of it. And as a director, I mean, the, the trust is not just amongst the art, amongst the actors, but is also as a director, you feel like you have a group people and no idea is too ridiculous and you're you know you can say as a director have some absolutely outrageous notion that may be a terrible idea but people actually for the most part except unless it's deborah who if she, if she it's a bad idea she'll do it really badly and I'll <laughs> think, yeah, you executed that really badly just so that i can see that it's a bad idea but, yeah, that that there's that there's that trust because as a director, it's also scary. You go in there and you know you feel like you have to at times you have to have all the answers and you don't. And to have a group of people that have that faith in you to try things and see what works and what doesn't work. But you know, and and also uh, something we haven't talked about, and those watching may not know this, but when we're casting, we always we do we can't we don't always succeed, but we try to get at least two. And if possible, three resident artists in a cast, particularly with a guest director, because they're, our resident artist, just the way that you work, it, you're not the police with new people coming in, but when new people come in, they're nervous, especially when they're working with folks who have known each other for a long time, they feel very nervous. And not only do we know that you put them at ease, but you set an example in terms of what we care about at that theater. So when we have two or three resident artists in a cast, we know we're not gonna have many problems with newbies who have come in because you all are gonna take care of it, which again is a beautiful thing. A question, have you ever dreamed as a character? Mm. Wow. Poor no. Erica, can you hear us? Is Erica? Erica struggling? Is yeah. she struggling to hear us there? Hey, I think she can hear Rap. Rap, can you ask her? Yes. Can you hear me, Erica? Erica. <laughs> no, that's, that's an exit, exit stage left. So, so, any of you, have you ever dreamed as a character? You know, I've never I dreamed did. as the character, but I find that dreaming of the character and about the character is a great preparation to try to figure out what the mindset is, what the the way the character thinks. Um, I would devoutly wish to dream as the character. Very good. Yeah. That's, that would be amazing. I certainly, I don't think I have. Anybody else? Okay, so I daydream I, about the character all day long. Yes, too. yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah, daydreaming is, is the funnest. I, I did a little bit, uh, the only time I can remember is um, during Frankenstein, I, 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 <laughs> I was having some, <laughs> some dreams, some dreams. Um, and I was, uh, yeah, exactly. Dream, dream, dream. dream or nightmares. <laughs> yeah, well, more of the latter. And I was also, I was also turning 40. So I was having an existential crisis about like, my life and my career and what I wanted and what, and, and then this character was so, I mean, it was such, I'm sure if you've got to see it, that it was so dark, 
So that was um, that was rough. Yeah, I've had I've had really I've had gnarly uh, nightmares uh, as uh, you know not necessarily as the character but sort of tangentially related to the character. Um, imaginary invalid, uh, especially. I had a horrific nightmare about that one time. Mm -hmm. I, I I had like I was wearing this muzzle. I don't for anybody who hasn't seen it. I was wearing this muzzle uh, that flattened my nose and constricted my face. Um, so uh, I, I had very little mobility, uh, and I, in the nightmare, I got caught backstage with Jeremy in his wig and was slowly being strangled. Oh my uh, God! Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was. Uh, oh my God! Genius! That was genius. <laughs> it was a nightmare watching. Genius. Yeah. yeah, no, seriously. Yeah, I think I think the word burlesque was used a couple times. We thought that the, that the idea behind the straps was to hold his brain together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that was it. That was it. I, I, try, I kept trying to urge you to have a water bottle, a spritzer. Oh, yeah, like a dog. He would spray you, and he just wouldn't go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't like it. You didn't like it. So, probably gonna as, have to as, as, as we're coming to a close here, anything else you want to say? Because I think Part of the part of the I know having a resident company is this, and Alan talked about that a little bit. Is that this wonderful relationship that we get yeah. to have with uh, with our community? And uh, a lot of our patrons have been following you. I mean, at a noise within, really, the company is the star. Been following your your career and your growth and your development as an artist. And I know that all of you really value um, the relationship that we develop with our patrons over the, over the years. So is there anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, my favorite part of a Christmas carol is at the end, we get to go out and sort of say hi and, and you know, and pass out cider. And when we get to meet these really face to face, our, our audience members, our patrons, and they tell us not just that they love the Christmas carol, but that they love Henry V or whatever, and they share their experiences with us. When you guys at home share those experiences with us, it means the world to me. I don't know if you guys love that. That's like I, my favorite. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah, that with that show, particularly with Christmas Carol, because it's so much joy when we come off stage. Well, yeah. And uh, I mean, it, it, like, you know, like Christmas Carol, also the student matinees are some of my favorite shows because you're introducing you're introducing kids to some of them who have never been to the theater, who have never read a yeah. Shakespeare play, and they are being presented with a, a polished professional production that really brings out the language. And to 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 give to, to be able to give that to them is a gift for us. And uh, I, I just, rap, it's rap. Really Do you remember that school? That rap, rap, that school that we stayed after for Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, it was about 18 students. Yes. And it was all of their first play they'd ever seen in their life. Yeah. And uh, which it's a three a three hour existential comedy by Tom Stoppard is a, is, is a jumping in the deep end, but like they were amazing and they were so captivated. I mean, that was a special treat. Yeah. Well, we're creating, we're creating a, a, an audience for the future. Correct. Well, I mean, we have patrons. We have patrons whose children have been coming since they were six years old, and now the the children are grown up with children of their own who they're planning to bring. It's it's we get to know them as we go through the years as well, and it's it's been very very moving to see their lives as well. Thank you guys so very much. Beautiful, you guys. And, and we want to end uh, the next uh, several uh, um, Fridays at five by thanking uh, all of our donors who have donated to our virtual gala, to our Rise Together campaign, and who have purchased a subscription to the 2021 season. So we thought we'd start with the letter A, and we would uh, start... Um, our, our artists will read out the names, and that's the way that we will um, close our Fridays at five sessions. So, without further ado, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, and I'll start us off here. Forgive me if I mispronounce. I love all of you, David Abhu and Sachiko Yamada, George Abdo and Sarah Campbell, Dr. Robert Aquarelli, Florence. Agka Willy, Fred Alcantar and Donna Hines, Edward Alvarado, 
Terry and Roxana Amdor, Marilyn Angier, Amy Aquino and Drew McCoy, Richard Archer, Pedro Armendariz, Peter and Molly Bachman, Hank Baker and Jerry Arco, and Melissa Baker Farmer. And we also want to thank Nancy Balance and Janine and John Ballister, LA County Supervisor Catherine Barger, Barbara Barton, Judy and Steve Bass, Hal Bass, Catherine and Michael Brown, Patricia Beauchamp, Bernadine Bednars, Vince Beggs, Armin Beheshti, Robert and Claire Bellanti, and Rick Burstein, and Charles and Joe Berryman. And uh, Catherine Biondi and Julian Biondi, Bill and Claire Bogard, Tom and Karen Bogard, John Ballo, Howard and Jane Boltz, Lenny and John Burston, Jane Booth, Diana Booz, Ramona Bradbury, Peter and Roberta Braun, Richard Bressler, Carol and Vern Bachstrop, and Carol Brody. We'd also like to thank Barbara and Frederick Brown, Martha and Michael Brown, Dale Brown, Patricia Jean Berg, Irene Berkner, Barbara Burns, Toomey Wynn and Chris Burt, Meg Huntington and Paul Cajero, Larry and Marilyn Callahan, Charles and Martha Canales, Eileen Carhart, Sherry Carroll, Ellen Carroll, and Robert and Joan Cathcart. And to end it, Rose Chan and Warren Louie, Karen Chevalier and Solomon Taylor, Peter and Karen Christie, Catherine Clark, Stephanie and Dennis Cohen, Ira Cohen, Linda Collier, Jean Collingsworth, William and Mary Coman, Rosa Kumare, John and Ginny Cushman, Julie and Brian Daniels, Tracy Davidson, and David and Olivia Davidson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week for Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.